Hi, welcome back to Unchained Crochet. We are going to um, do the tutorial for the 10 pointed star uh, round ripple baby blanket. Um, I've chosen to use Baby B Soft and Sleek Baby. It's a low pill fiber. Um, it calls for a J hook, which is what I have here. Um, I usually go up a size um, when I'm working with some of these worsted weights, but I'm going to go ahead and use this one today. I um, hope my lighting is sufficient for you. Um, we're going to just get started. You can use a magic circle if you know how I want to do that. I do not prefer the magic circle. Um, to me, it kind of pops up like a nipple if you get too many stitches in there and since we're putting 10 stitches in it I do not want to use that method so you'll want to make your slip knot using whatever preferred method you you want to I do mine like this and I'll show you that again put the tail yarn there and then over the back of my finger and down I come up behind it hook it, twist it, and then I pull the loop that's on my finger through the loop I just made and then give it a tug. And you don't have to worry about getting that really tight. Um, you can leave it a little bit loose. It's easier to work in that way. And um, so basically the chains that we start with are going to be our starting double crochet, the first double crochet into this first stitch. So that first chain is going to be what we work into. So we're going to do three double crochet. Those three double crochet there, or sorry, three chains. It's late <laughs> here. Um, those three chains count as your double crochet. Now I'm going to go into that first chain that was on the hook, and we're going to do nine double crochet. So I'm going to start off counting... This one is number two because we want to do ten total. Two, three, four, and I just go around that tail. Five, six, seven. Eight. and you can stretch that out if you want to to get your last couple stitches in there nine ten okay so now we've got ten counting that first chain three that we started with so I am going to tighten up my tail and close that up a bit so um, this just kind of it lays a lot flatter. Um, you avoid that nipple look. We don't want any uh, THOs. <laughs> Not in a baby blanket. Maybe for a pasty. <laughs> little humor there. Okay, so I close that up just, and I think I hit the wrong chain, sorry. We're going to close it up with a slip stitch into the top of the chain three that we did at the beginning. So just slip stitch into that top chain. And that won't be very noticeable once we get going here. So now we've got the 10 double crochet. We're going to double count just to be sure. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. Okay, so now that we have the 10, we're going to double our stitch count this time. So let's do our chain 3. That counts as the first double crochet. And into that same chain that you're in right now, you're coming out of, you're going to do another double crochet. Place two double crochet in each stitch around. I'm hoping I don't make a mistake because it's been a hot minute since I did one of these and I don't have the directions written down. I've just done it from memory and feel. Um, and I'm sure I made a modification or two from the original directions that I viewed before. It wasn't a pattern per se. Again, I like the 10 points because it lays flatter. You don't get that wavy record effect that you get with 12 pointed star. Um, 
I imagine if you did some extra rounds in the middle um, before starting your rippling, um, then that center would grow more and accommodate the, the bulk um, in the middle, kind of, you know, flatten it out some and make it grow a little bit more before you start your ripple on the 12 point. Um, I just have not tried it since I just, I love doing the 10 point, so that's what I do. I think that this method would work for any number of points. Just start with the number of points that you want, um, you know, start with the double crochet count to be the same as the number of points you want on your blanket. So if you want an eight pointed star, then do eight double crochet into your uh, first chain instead of the 10. You could even do five point if you want to do five point. So now we've got two double crochet in each stitch around. This was where we did our slip stitch to join. So now I'm going to slip stitch into the top of the chain three that we did at the beginning of this round. So now we have 20 stitches. See how that lays pretty flat? Okay. So now what we need to do, since we have 20 stitches and we don't want 20 points, we need to get back to our 10 points. Okay, not 10 stitches, but 10 points. So what we're going to do is we're going to chain one, two, three, four for a double crochet and a chain one. And now we're going to V-stitch basically is what we're doing. We're going to double crochet into that same chain where we joined. So we've got a V-stitch. We've got chain three plus an extra one for the space and a double crochet. Now we're going to skip every other stitch. So we're going to skip this one and we're going to V-stitch again, double crochet, chain one, double crochet, and just continue around. Skip the next stitch, double crochet, chain one, double crochet. Skip the next stitch, double crochet, chain one, double crochet. Skip, do a V-stitch, double crochet, chain one, double crochet. Skip one, place another V-stitch. Skip one, do another V-stitch. I love how repetitive this is. And I love going round and round, especially like if you're doing different colors. I'm going to do another color after this one, maybe two more colors. But I'm just going to use this blue ball up in the middle of the blanket. Um, but I love going round and round, and I love growing from the growing it from the center out. There's something a little feng shui about about it. It's even. It's round. It's repetitive. Uh, it's very zen when you're making it, um, and it's very visual pattern. There's our last one that we're going to skip, and now to join, we're going to slip stitch into the third chain up that we started with. One, two, three, slip stitch. So every time you join, you're slip stitching into a chain. Now we've got our chain one right there. All right, what we want to do now is we're going to start um, establishing, I would call this the establishment or foundation round for the ripple. This is where um, it's the foundation of the ripple. It's going to um, start our points, make them more obvious. Right now that we don't have a point to it, we just have a space there. So we're going to slip stitch into that chain one and we're going to chain three. Now we're going to double crochet, chain one, two double crochet. So we've got a shell stitch there. This round I like to do just the chain one for that space. And after that you can do a chain two if that's what you want to do. It helps to fit the stitches in there a little bit better. But you can see we've basically got four stitches in there in that space and it fits pretty well in that chain one space. So it's up to you if you want to do a chain one space or chain two. 
that doesn't really matter so much as your count does, okay? So we're going to skip over these two double crochet and we're going into our next uh, space here, our next chain one. So we're going to do two double crochet, chain one, two double crochet. I am dragging my skinny yarn. I need to pull some more yarn out. Sorry. So we've got two double crochet, chain one, two double crochet. Continue around and do that in each chain one space. You can pause this video as you need to. If I go too fast for you, I'm just going to keep continuing around because we're just going to do a couple more rounds. I'm just going to continue the video. Don't forget your chain ones. And after this round, you can actually stop and um, count your chain one spaces. You should have 10. Really, though, if you have less, it's not a big deal. <laughs> if it doesn't bother you, one less or one more point isn't really going to matter. What matters is that you're consistent with your counts as you go around each round. If you feel like you're not happy with the size of your hook, by all means, now is the time to switch. Because if you go up a hook size or two, it may get wavy on you um, and be tighter in the middle and then wavy toward the outside. So we're going to slip stitch to the top of the chain three that we began with. All right. And right now that's kind of bumped up. It will flatten out and you can also steam it but you can see when it's laid down, it, it lays pretty good. All right, so this is where we begin. Um, we've done our foundation for the um, ripple, and we're going to begin skipping these two stitches that are at the beginning and end of each shell stitch, or each, um, each point. And in the points, we're going to keep doing our two double crochet, chain one, two double crochet. Um, but this first one here, I've slip stitched to join. My next one, my I don't want to chain three here. We're skipping this stitch. So we're going to slip stitch to join at the beginning of the round, but you're going to slip stitch into the next stitch and chain three. Okay, so we have essentially skipped that first stitch. And we'll be doing the same thing on the other side of the previous point. And then you're going to do your two double crochet into the space, your chain one, and two more double crochet. So see, whereas we had two stitches on each side of the point, we now have three on each side. And this is how it grows. So we're going to skip. We're going to do one more right here into that first double crochet after the point, after the shell stitch. We're going to skip that double crochet, skip that double crochet, and we're going to into the next one. So each round you skip those two between the, the points. And then we're going to go into the space with our shell stitch. Two double crochet, chain one, two double crochet. Double crochet into that first one. Skip that one, skip that one. Go into the next one. So each 
round, every round, you're, you're essentially adding two stitches to each point. You've got a stitch added here and there'll be a stitch added here. So whereas we had four to make up that point, now we're going to have six. Next round will be eight. If you didn't catch my other video I made um, today, then um, you want to check that out. This yarn is from that stash, um, the haul from Hobby Lobby. <laughs> Hobby Lobby haul. They have a major clearance going on right now. And it was 99 cents. Ba boom Skip those two. Go into the next one. Do a shell. Go into that one. Just don't forget to go into that first stitch after you get the shell. See, you may want that extra space um, to do two chains in the middle of your shell. Just because it makes that, if you don't smush it out of the way, it makes that a little hard to see, that first stitch that you're going into. You might skip it. You don't want to do that. So it's up to you. It's your preference. You can do a loose chain one. Alternatively. I just like how fast the um, chain one goes as opposed to the chain two. So it's... Really just your personal preference. I don't want to run out of room on this video like I did my video earlier. I was showing off the stash, flashing my stash, and boom, it said that the file got too large, so I had to start another one. Now I've got to edit and join those two together and blah, blah, blah. So I'm just stitching fast. You can pause this and rewind as need be. Every row is pretty much the same. You're going to do the same thing. You're going to skip those two stitches between the points. So you'll end up with a little hole right there. That's your decrease point. And then your increase points are the points of your star. You get this going in a, um, I've done several, several of these, um, for little girls in my family and donation. I think I donated one, um, in the Mandela or Mandela baby and love it. It works out very well. I did my granddaughter's, um, a couple uh, round ripples and not exactly like this one, but uh, it worked out very, very nice in, in the Mandela. So that's it, essentially. I'm going to do one more round with you. Um, and the, the points of the star really, they get more exaggerated as your blanket grows. So we slip stitched to join to that first chain three. Now I've slip stitched into the second one. I'm going to chain three and then do a double crochet into that one. Do the shell and the point. Don't forget to do two double crochet, chain one, two double crochet, because you need those to grow um, and keep it consistent. If you're going to skip one here, you need to add one there. We're adding two, but you get my point. Um, if you're only adding one, it's not going to keep the shape and it's not going to grow evenly. 
it's going to be kind of taut around the edges. Now that I said all that about the chain one, I may switch to chain two. We'll see. It'll probably be this next round if I do it. Because I see with this yarn in particular, it's thicker. It doesn't have that as much stretch as the mandala I usually use. It's thicker and it kind of just wants to lay kind of bulky in the, that tip. But you can see it is starting to make more of a point. But, I don't know. We'll see. I may go ahead and change to chain two. I do want to show you, even though this isn't complete, when I get done with this round, I'm going to start the next round, and I'm going to show you what I do um, when I am, oops, didn't make it all the way around, because you get to the end of the blanket, and you don't know, you might be a little bit short of finishing around. It is not a big deal, especially if you're using mandala, but it's not going to be noticeable to do a partial round. And so I'm going to show you how I, um, kind of make it blend in a little bit by decreases and then ending up with a slip stitch, um, in the middle of a round. That way you can get the most out of your yarn and you don't have to worry about um, running out as long as it's as big as you want it. I do wish I'd have used a K hook. But that is alright. And you know if it's tight like this, steam block it. It'll loosen it up, it'll open it up some, relax the fiber. Um, it will not melt your yarn. It will just kill it with steam and make it behave in the way you want it to. I just use my steam iron. I use it on the highest setting and make sure I have plenty of water in there. And it really doesn't take long to do it, especially since it's round. You just kind of pat it and, you know go around in circles. So right now this is feeling kind of bulky. If I steam it, then it's going to have a, a bit more drape. Wrap around the baby a little bit better, I think. Skipping those two. Don't forget to skip two. Okay, so this is where we slip stitch to join to the first chain three. Go skip that stitch, skip that stitch. We're going to slip stitch into our top of the chain three. Okay, now we're going to slip stitch into the next stitch. Because we're skipping that first one. We want to double crochet. We're going to do chain three for the double crochet. Now let's get over here to the other side of this point. And uh, we're just going to pretend that maybe we made it halfway around. And when it's bigger, you know, you get more space between your points. That point could be, you know, 12 inches away from where we started. So nobody's going to pick at it and notice, oh, you just started here and 
you know, you ended it right here, and now it's going to be, you know, visually separated pretty well. So it's not very noticeable that you um, did not finish that round. Let's go to the next point. We're going to skip those two. I really, um, I can't even show you really how to decrease much. Let's go back. There's not enough stitches here. I'm going to show you how to do the decrease right here. We did our point. Let's next stitch, do a half double. Next stitch, do a single. And then the next stitch, do a slip stitch. And then draw up a loop and you would cut your thread. This is it. Say you ran out of yarn and you didn't make it all the way around. So that there would be a lot more space between here and here. But basically, you know, you get the blanket done and it's really not noticeable. You just smush it like that. So that tapers it nice. Uh, so, you know, you see right here, it's really not noticeable that you stopped short of finishing your next points. So, um, and that really is, you wouldn't see that much, especially with a mandala or a drapey or yarn. So that is how you do the 10 pointed round ripple. I just think it looks so nice. It reminds me of a doily. This yarn is very soft while we're talking about this yarn. That's why they call it soft and sleek. Um, it is very soft. I think if I um, continue with this blanket, and I think I will, um, but I think right now would be a good time for me to um, switch up to the K-hook. I would just feel more comfortable. It's kind of catchy with my tension and as thick as the yarn is. I just think I would prefer the K. All right. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for joining me. And I hope you've enjoyed this and enjoy your blanket.